Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. Elex 2 came out on March 1st, which is over 8 months from the time when this video goes live. It's kinda crazy to think that it's been so long, well, at least to me. I covered this game with a pretty long review, as well as some tips for combat, but I also covered it extensively before it came out. It was one of my most anticipated RPGs of 2022, because I'm a huge fan of Piranha Bytes games. So I think this would be a good time to reflect on what happened with this game. Now obviously, this won't be a review about the game, because like I already said, I've got one of those and you're more than welcome to check it out. My opinion about the game in general didn't really change that much from then. The review was mostly positive, but I also didn't hold back with criticism on the parts of the game where I felt it was needed. You're starting to get on my nerves. Before we continue with the video, a quick word from today's sponsor. Yahaha Studio is a brand new, user-generated content creation platform for 3D multiplayer interactive experience. This platform allows you to easily create virtual experiences and the best part about it, you don't even need any coding experience or server knowledge. You can simply use one of the available templates, components and smart assets in Yahaha Studio to make your dream game. Yahaha provides you with millions of 3D assets that are instantly ready to use, along with the possibility to monetize your content. The process of making your content is pretty easy, it's really fun when you get to the stage where you get to playtest what you just made. How about a little game of hide and seek or prop hunt? I really want to turn into a lamp, but I first need to add the asset to the template. You can see how easy it is to add assets to the template and use it in the playtest mode. It's just a couple of clicks basically. And just like that it's done and we can test it out in the playtest mode. <laughs> yep, this is my life now I guess. Use the link in the description to download Yahaha Studio for free and start your exciting journey as a game developer. Currently, Elex 2 has almost identical reviews like Elex 1 on Metacritic and Steam as well. The user score is 7.0 for both games and Elex 2 has somewhat lower critic score compared to Elex 1. Steam users left mostly positive reviews on both games and the percentage of all reviews is very similar. But obviously, the first game came out a while ago, so it has a much higher number of reviews. That's definitely the biggest reason, but we can take the number of copies sold as another very important metric. Well, we could if we actually knew the exact number, but we don't, so we can only speculate. Elex 2 was also released on current and last gen consoles, and we basically don't have any info about the numbers of copies sold on those platforms. But when it comes to the PC version, we have a couple of metrics that are worth checking out. The all-time peak on SteamDB is not the most reliant metric for how many copies the game sold, that's without a question. But this metric is very useful if you want to see how many people are interested in playing the game on Steam, and how many people played the game at its highest point of interest. That number didn't change that much from the last time I mentioned it in one of my videos. You might remember the video where I expressed my displeasure about THQ and Piranha Bytes, because I believe they could have done a much better job with the release dates. I still strongly believe that releasing your game so close to one of the most anticipated games ever was obviously not a great idea. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. Even though Piranha Bytes have their core audience that will always buy their games, I still don't understand why would you shoot yourself in the foot like this. I mean, it's logical that you always want to sell as many copies as you can and possibly expand your audience. The biggest reason why I'm even mentioning the peak number on Steam DB is not related to how many copies the game sold. Even in that first video where we talked about the numbers, I don't believe I ever mentioned the sales. But some people were fixated on the sale numbers and they misunderstood the whole point of that discussion. I know very well that Piranha Bytes games will always sell at least well enough for the studio to be financially stable and to make the publisher happy. However, like it or not, these numbers don't lie. The first Telex game had an all-time peak of almost 23,000 people. That's substantially higher compared to 8K that Elex 2 had. When I used this metric before as an example, some people in the comments said how this is irrelevant because it's a single player game. Who cares how many people are playing it, right? Sure, this number shouldn't affect your personal enjoyment with the game by any means, that's not the point. And to add to that discussion, I hate how many people became obsessed with these numbers, especially if we talk about single player games. Remember when the numbers for Elden Ring on Steam started going down and people started calling it a dead game? Yeah, it's stupid as fuck. But the all-time peak number is very relevant for this topic, for Elex 2 I mean. The bottom line is, there was a much bigger interest for Elex 1 than Elex 2 on Steam, and that fact is backed up by these numbers. 
Another argument that some people used to justify the lackluster ELEX2 numbers on Steam was the console ports of the game. Maybe ELEX2 did a lot better on consoles, and maybe it did, we don't have any metrics for that, like I said before. But they didn't take in consideration that ELEX1 was also on consoles, and it still did a lot better on Steam compared to ELEX2. So even if by some chance the game sold a lot better on consoles, which I highly doubt, that's not a good excuse for why the game did a lot worse on Steam compared to ELEX1. The thing is, I obviously care a lot about these games, and I want them to do well. When I was playing the beta for ELEX2, I honestly thought that this game is going to do a lot better than ELEX1, because I think it made some massive improvements. But apparently, there are a lot of people who disagree with me on this topic, and that's totally fair. Unfortunately, my predictions for ELEX2 were just wrong. Since I mentioned the publisher, I've been covering a lot of games that have something to do with THQ in one way or another. Actually, I'm a big fan of THQ's philosophy when it comes to buying different IPs and keeping them alive. Without them, a lot of games that I love would just be completely forgotten a long time ago, like Titan Quest or Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. They are not just buying IPs for the sake of it, they seem to have a clear goal with every IP under their belts. Admittedly, the content they are putting up for some of these games I mentioned is not exactly of the highest quality, but still, it's very good to know that those IPs have a future. Let me just remind you that Gothic Remake is being published by THQ, and without them, I don't believe we would see another Gothic title for a very long time. We are definitely going to see another Elex game from Piranha Bytes, which will probably come out in the next 3 or 4 years. So even if Piranha Bytes have some plans for another gothic title, which is highly unlikely if you ask me, it won't come out for at least 9 years or something like that. That's why I really hope the remake lives up to its potential. Some of the recent updates like character models and armor sets look amazing, and we know the whole combat system from the teaser was completely scrapped, so fingers crossed. They seem to take the feedback from the fans very seriously, which is great to see. When it comes to the state of the game itself, ELEX2 had a couple of minor patches which mostly just fixed some of the bugs. In my experience with the game on PC, after 130 plus hours it was really stable, even from the beta version. I never had any major issues, bugs or glitches. The only thing which I found problematic was the performance, especially in major cities. But in the meantime, Piranha Bytes added the support for DirectX 12, which greatly increases the performance of the game. DirectX 12 support didn't really fix all the issues with the performance, but I'm afraid this is all we're going to get. I still can get lock 60fps in some of these locations, even though I'm pretty sure my PC can handle it. The console ports got the same patch support. I was playing the PS5 version of the game as well, and I think it was totally unacceptable for this game to not run on 60fps, regardless of the resolution. I'm pretty sure the frame rate on consoles is variable, so the feel of the gameplay can be really inconsistent. However, they added the option to play the game in the performance mode, which sets the internal resolution to 1080p. The game tries to keep constant 60fps in this mode, and for the most part that's exactly what you get. I would always choose the option with higher fps, and I'm pretty sure the majority of people prefer to have higher fps over graphical fidelity. As for some other issues, the parry mechanic for two-handed weapons was completely bugged, but they fixed that as well. Now it works as it should, as you can see here. Piranha Bytes is not well known for supporting their games after the release date. It's not like ELEX2 needed more support when it comes to technical side of things, except the poor performance in major cities. Although I'm pretty sure this is heavily related to the game's engine, and it seems like they are pushing the limits with optimization. But when it comes to new content for their games, this studio is never focusing on DLCs. The one and only DLC from this studio was all the way back to Gothic 2 Night of the Raven, which was an amazing addition to the base game. I have a lot of respect for that actually, even though sometimes I really wish to see more content. This studio is very small, and just the fact they are making these huge open world RPGs is a miracle in itself. So I guess they can only afford to focus on the next game they wish to make, and not waste their time with DLCs. I think it's very unlikely that we're ever going to see a much bigger Piranha Bytes game studio and a AAA RPG from them. Although I would definitely like to see how their games would look with a proper AAA budget. The marketing campaign of the game was pretty decent in terms of the quality of these trailers. The trailers for the game were top notch, they look amazing. Some of these trailers reached a couple of million views, but it's very obvious they were promoted and played as pre-roll ads. For example, the release trailer had almost 1.5 million views, but only 53 comments and 590 likes, which is really disproportionate. 
promoting these videos as pre-roll ads is not bad per se, but they give you a very distorted image of how many people are actually interested in the game. Even so, I think Piranha Bytes will earn more than enough money to successfully fund their next game, which is definitely going to be Elex 3. We learned that this studio likes to make RPG trilogies, they did it with Gothic and Reason games. We can only hope they return to the roots after Elex 3 and start making a sequel to Gothic 3, so we can finally forget about Forsaken Gods and Arcania. Speaking of Forsaken Gods, I'll have a review video ready by next Sunday, oh boy. <sighs> Very well then. And I already have a retrospective video for Arcania, so you can watch that if you missed it. I must give you a warning though, it's not pretty. Yo, 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 I got some new games today, man. But we got Ghost of Tsushima, heard that's an awesome game. We got Skyrim, uh, wait, Skyrim? I don't remember buying Skyrim again. What the? Fuck? I'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, Demon Souls, awesome remake. And we got. Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, guys, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. I make longer retrospective videos about RPGs and various content related to this genre of games. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon or as a YouTube member. Even the smallest support means a lot and you'll get your name immortalized in the end credits of these videos. That will be all and I'll see you in the next one.